a gifted genetic scientist from the planet Volovox Vic. He was the first trainer of Hal Jordan. He is the Green Lantern of Space Sector 674, known as Kilowog. I am the Markman and today we're going to unbox and review McFarlane's DC Multiverse figure of the Green Lantern Kilowog from the two-pack with Kyle Rayner. But I'm going to review Kyle in a separate video. And just a simple request, please subscribe to my channel. So are you ready? Then welcome to the Markverse! So was that your secret identity, engineer? Secret what? <laughs> <laughs> That's Hal's hang-up. That thing on his face, it's a mask. He wears it in case some Earthling sneaks onto the Interceptor while we're in space, mind you, and goes, Aha! The Green Lantern on my planet is Hal Jordan! I'm telling everyone! <laughs> <laughs> Because I can't see your cheekbones? Kilowog, I guess, is the most famous non human Green Lantern since Sinestro, who now already is a Yellow Lantern. He was trained by the GL Drill Sergeant Ermi, who also made Kilowog a Green Lantern by drawing the lantern symbol on the latter's chest before the former's dying breath. In terms of his design accuracy, I cannot see any perfectly correct basis. Usually, in the comics, his gloves are white and stretched to his forearm. But his figure, its forearm is color green while his gloves are black. And if his forearms are green, his hands are bare and his face is a little smaller. Or if it is based on the animated series, the issue is his body symmetry and the design of the other parts of his costume. Let's take a closer look. I like how they sculpted his face. I don't have any issue with the gummy face color but I hope they had put some shadings to make it more realistic and badass. He has a great stance and body symmetry. One reason is because of the shape of his straps down to his shoulders. It's perfect. We have some details on his gauntlet. Of course, we need to check his ring. The placement is correct. It's on the middle finger, which by the way, Kilowog only has four. And at least it's big enough to conform to the size of Kilowog's finger. And for those who do not know yet, the rings, they resize based on the users. It's also nice, they made the ring shinier. There are different textures. We have rough and smooth parts which adds to the aesthetics. The JL symbol, no issues. I also noticed there are different shadings of green. There's a little yellow-green color finish on his chest armor to his abs and trunks. While his back, has a darker green compared to his trunks. Aside from this, he has a thick back plus some details like in the front. Wow, I like the boots. It's nicely done. Now the accessories, the usual base, the card, then this translucent hammer construct. It looks amazing. We can see the GL symbol on both sides. 
Then we have little spikes on both ends. Even the handle has details. Maybe this is the best or at least one of the best McFarlane DC Multiverse accessories I have. Though I might be biased because this is translucent. My usual comment for accessories is they look plasticky. And that is because they are not translucent and they are painted. Then his lantern which matches his size. Can you imagine if Hal, Kyle, Alan, or Sinestro had a lantern of this size? When McFarlane does any green lantern or even any of the other color lantern core, they should include a lantern or its equivalent. It should be a must. Because when I bought my first GL Hal Jordan, they did not include a lantern. Same thing with my John Stewart. I was very disappointed. I think the first figure they included a lantern was with the figures from the Atrocitus BAF. It's Kyle and Deathstorm. Even Atrocitus did not get any red lantern. Actually, there are not much of details with his lantern. Even the symbol was not placed. Still, I like the style. For the measurement, he stands 9 inches. For the articulation, starting with the head, up, down, then side to side. Then the arms, lateral raise, we have full rotation, bicep swivel, its elbows are only single jointed, then full wrist motion, its diaphragm, it's fully articulated. We can move his hips. Then for the legs, sideways, forward, back. So this is the issue. Actually, a usual issue of McFarlane is their leg movement. No thigh swivel, double jointed knee, Full ankle movement. Lastly, we have toe articulation. Then for the comparison, first up is of course with Kyle Rayner. Then with the other lantern leaders from left to right, the black lantern that represents death, Necron, the yellow lantern that represents fear, Sinestro, and the red lantern that represents rage, Atrocitus. Then with my other mega figures, Mongol and Doomsday. Then Lobo and Bane. Then let's showcase my other green lanterns again from left to right. Rotlap Fan, Toma Ray, John Stewart, Kilowog. Hal Jordan, Alan Scott, and Kyle Rayner. That's the comparison. I love this figure. It's really worth it. The height, the stance, the body symmetry, the color, and the design. It's all good. Maybe the only thing they need to fix a little is his face. Maybe it lacks a better color finish, but still, it looks good. The articulation is better than some McFarlane figures. The only issue I guess is his legs, which is really a common issue for McFarlane. The accessories were chosen well and were also designed well. I consider this figure as one of the best mega figures that was created by McFarlane. 
it is a must-have if you're planning to expand your Green Lantern Core. So, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button, please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to push that notification button since I publish new videos every week. Again, I am The Markman. Thank you for visiting The Markverse. And always remember to pay it forward with kindness.